let's say I want it over here. And then let's create another data element. Let's bring in another uh, line chart this time. So I'll bring in, if I'm doing a trending, for example, I'll need to bring in something from my date dimension or my date table here. And I'm going to bring in the month, and I'm going to look at the profitability by month. Okay, so I'll check that off. And if this is really trending data, I probably want to see trending data in a line chart. So I'll bring in a line chart, adjust my report. So I've done a total of probably six clicks so far. Not too bad, not too shabby. And I'm already able to visualize my data pretty well here. Now this is, you'll notice this is pretty small as we're visualizing it right now, but I'm in the designer mode. I'll show you towards the end what the end user experience is and how it's a lot easier to interact with for, uh, and a lot easier to read uh, from an end user experience. They also have these really neat things here called pop-outs. If I click this little button here in the top right that says pop-out, it'll actually full screen any of these charts for me. Both from a developer experience and an end user experience, it lets me do that. Now the other nice thing about Power View is it handles images really well. So let's say, for example, I have images in my sales data that I see here. And I want to visualize the images of my products so that as I'm filtering through my report, I can see a little picture of my product and I understand exactly what I am looking at here. Devin, so I'm going to check off a couple, uh, yeah. I hate to interrupt, but we have a quick question. Mark would like to know what application is being used right now. Okay, this is PowerView. So this is PowerView inside of SharePoint. Um, now the designer, I know I just kind of jumped into this. The designer is actually Silverlight. So there's, it's, it, and Silverlight is basically Microsoft's version of uh, Flash. But all I had to do to get to this point is open up a Power Pivot Gallery inside of SharePoint. And then you'll notice there's a little button here that says create a Power View report. So what would have to be required to get to this point is I would need to have e either a, a Power Pivot workbook that's been dis deployed out to SharePoint or a tabular model. Right? Either one of those two things that are able to use as a data source uh, for Power View. And then coming up soon in a, in a future release, there's actually a CTP already out for this, you'll be able to use the multi-dimensional version of analysis services to create Power View reports. And that's, that's coming up soon. Okay, not out yet, but it'll be here soon. So again, this is all, this is all Power View. I just really want to show you the interactive functionality and how easy it is to create reports that are pretty impressive here. Let me, let me take it a step further here. I, I have these nice little images in my data, but I want to visualize it a little better. There's a visualization here called a card. A card visualization is kind of like a business card or a baseball card. It just has, an, it takes images in really well and then it takes other descriptive information about that image, full screen right here. So other descriptive information like the demographics of who bought it, what group it's part of, the category, all these things I can check off here. And you'll notice it adds it into the card for me. So each of my cards have what the product is, the image, and again, I know it's kind of fuzzy here, but it will be better once we get into the end user view. And then all of the specifics about that product I'm able to list here. Now, one of the really nice things about Power View is everything ties together without any effort on your part from a um, presentation layer side. So if I've created proper relationships on my data source, which again, the data source either has to be a Power Pivot workbook deployed to SharePoint or a tabular model that, that the connection has been deployed to SharePoint. One of those two things will allow me to do things like this, where I can actually use my chart to do filtering. So here I've selected a category that's part of my chart and you'll notice that it actually changed everything else on my report and I didn't have to do anything to make that happen other than just interact with the, the chart. So the end user experience for Power View is highly interactive. I can click objects, they interact with each other, I can multi-select so I can hold down control and select something else and I can actually see everything is brought together from my little multi-selection and if I click in the background of this chart it returns to showing everything. So really cool stuff here. Okay, I want to show you one more view of a report because this is kind of the wow factor with Power View, and then we will move on to our next topic here. So I'm going to show you one more view. This is this is probably the most impressive view, and I'm going to go ahead and check off some of these different data elements here. I promise this is something end users can handle. You'll, you'll notice I've just been checking off a few things. I, I might have be going through it kind of fast, but really want, that's going to be the end user experience once they you know, play with it, really. If they play with it for an hour, 
they'll be pretty comfortable with it. It's not a very intimidating tool. So I want to get a view of my data that shows me my revenue and maybe how the quantity that I've sold. And I also want to see things like, let's go up to my product here. I'm looking for number of products. That's fine. Here I can do my retail price is fine. Okay. And now what I'd like to do is bring in my category and I also want to look at this by month. So I'm going to bring in my category of my product right here. And the way I'd like to visualize this is through a scatter chart. So it's just a bubble chart basically that shows me all of my different data elements that I have here. It's pretty nice looking. I like that. But here's really the wow factor with PowerView is it's going to allow you to do things like animated charts. So I can actually add in something like the date. Bring this over here. I'm going to take this out for a moment because it's, there we go. Now if I add in the month, for example, and I add it to the play axis here, what this is going to allow me to do, and I need to adjust my size of my bubbles. Bear with me for one moment. There we go. Now what this is going to allow me to do is actually have an animated chart here. This is really neat. This, this kind of blows a lot of end users' minds once they see this. If I get a full view of this, you'll notice there's this little play button in the bottom left. It has a play access, which will actually allow me to see how each of these categories are doing over time. You can see the play access right here is right now looking at February of 2011. But if I hit the play button in the bottom left, we'll actually see over time how each of my products are doing. And you'll see some of them will jump out and pop out as being uh, better, better uh, selling categories, all based on the metrics that I placed into my chart. Now the other neat thing that we can do here is you can actually click on any of these bubbles that you see. And not only will you get a detail of that individual view of the bubble, which you can see came up on a pop-up, I can also hover over any of the previous versions or even look at multiple paths and see how each of these did over time. Now if I play this again, I'm able to look at two separate categories over time and how they compare to each other. And I have an emphasis placed on the two